All right, well, we want to welcome everyone to this year's Rendezvous 2014. It's our 15th year. Yeah. It's been a crazy ride, and we thought we'd just take you along a little bit and show you where we've been. Um, I don't know if you know, there's quite a few of you that have been here the whole time, but for the most part, you know, people come in and go out and move on and move forward, and, and uh, it's a it's a ride. <laughs> So, way back in the day, in 1999, uh, we did, Rick and Randy, and I think maybe Denny Beach, and a couple other people did, um, they got together to see if there was anyone else doing this crazy stuff with chainsaws, and out at Randy's shop, they invited a, a few carvers to come, and I think you had, what, 11 carvers? Nine? Mm, or 11? Not, probably about nine. Nine, and they had two blocks, they had a block of ice, and they had a log, and they had so much fun, they thought that they should probably take this public and see what they could do. So the idea kind of formed and it kind of got worked on and the internet came out. And, uh, so I think Randy said this morning that he told me he did a search on the internet on totem poles to find out if there was anybody carving or doing stuff and he found Dennis Heath from England and he found Red Whiteman from Florida who introduced him to Holger Bear. And Holger Bear had a website and Dennis had a website and so he wrote him a, a little note and said, hey, we're going to try and get together and do this carving event. Would you like to come? And they both said yes. So right off the bat, it was kind of an international flavor. And we had one female the first year, too. Yeah, we had two. We had oh, Judy, really? Judy Pratt oh, right. and um, Shelley Upol. Right. Yeah, and Shelley came from West Virginia. And I don't know if Rick Pratt's here this morning, but he and his wife came and and Judy also um, knew, knew computers pretty well, and she built a website. So between her and Holger Bear, after the event, they, they came up with websites, and it kind of went ballistic. And our newspaper picked up the article, and at that time, it went on the wire, the AP wire. It went viral, but Ed, it, it, Ed informed me that that word was not um, <laughs> popular yet. yet. So it kind of went on the, on the AP, and it went viral. We had photographers from the Associated Press come the first year and took pictures, and. You know, right? You know, it was kind of like um, it was magic. It just kind of happened. So, the second we had 33 carvers the first year. We thought that was a lot of carvers. And um, <laughs> then, then we decided to work on the second year, and we had like 50, 50 or 60 some carvers, and we were just overwhelmed. And um, every that, that was at Sandy Beach. It was crazy. It was in this little park about three miles out of town. And that was the first group right there. The first One group. of those pictures had a rainbow coming down over that crowd. That was really inspirational. That, that's probably it right there, maybe. It's, but it was really cool. And we felt like, you know, this is, this is the right thing to do and keep this going. And, and every year we're like that, too. I mean, as hard as it is for the family and the town to pull this it always seems like it's worth it in the end because you keep hearing the history back two years later you hear about some really amazing thing that happened because of the Rodney Moon. So that inspires us to override the, the tough spots and, and keep it going. Then the third year, 2002 was it? Do you have the t-shirts up there? I can follow it with the t-shirts. Mm -hmm. 2002 Wayne D. Moranville from Massachusetts said, you know, I can bring ice to your event. So um, Wayne packed up his truck and he brought ice and that was when we decided that we would start featuring an artist on the shirt that, that was that was con contributing to the art form or doing something special. And Wayne was our first um, carver on the t-shirt. And we did, um, well, in the beginning we used to donate what was left of the event to charity. And that was when the event was a three-day event, and we had 20 or 30 carvers. You know, there was it was a little easier to do something like that. As as the carver numbers grew and the international carvers started coming, they would come for 10 days. So we decided then we need to make this a 10-day event, and we needed to do seminars and and do other things that make this um, a, a worthy event to come to. So. Um, That's down at the fireman's uh, lot, and uh, it, it was a mud bath down there. We had old ladies dropping in mud puddles. <laughs> oh my gosh, but we muscled up to it, and everybody put up with it. But, uh, 
that was one of the reasons we left down there, and, and size-wise, it was just well, getting packed down there. And, and when we first started, guys didn't have trailers and inventory, and we'd all put up tents, you know. And then every year, you'd notice, holy man, everybody's getting trailers. You know? and new truck. But the first year, and I new mean, trucks, we used yeah. to pay garage bills for people that couldn't get here. That would break down on the way, and they'd call us, and we'd send them, you know, here, well, here, get your car fixed, and come on down, you know. And, and over the years, well, from Sandy Beach, um, the town said, why don't you bring this into town? And that's really when it became the Ridgeway Chainsaw Carver's Rendezvous. Prior to that, it was the Midwinter Chainsaw Carver's Rendezvous. And it was produced out of boredom and wondering if anybody else was out there trying to make a living. So um, so we, then we started doing uh, the, the thing at the courthouse. We would do the icing. Uh, we would do a little service for peace throughout the world. and. It was really kind of a beautiful thing. We'd light it up at night, and the ice got very, very expensive. And then as we moved the event down to motion control, it was so hard for the carvers to move their equipment from one place. You know, it was just, it just turned into a cluster. So it was just kind of um, a little more difficult, and we kind of had ice down at motion control for a while. We've, we've been four different places with this event as far as... It, I tell people it's like stuffing a monster in a jar, you know, it's, it's a, this is a big event in a very small town and logistically it's, it's, it's incredible. When you see it all happening, it just turns into magic. Yeah, thank God for, for part of our community here. I have people that provide housing and transportation and volunteer work and, and a heck of a staff. And I can't even really thank them all or even know who's all involved. And, you know, there's carvers that are better friends with people in Ridgeway than I am. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and no more people, probably. Uh. <laughs> so then, um, the second year, we featured Brian Ruth, Masters of the Chainsaw. Both Rick and Randy were part of Masters at that time. And um, they were very, very proud to be, you know, booked at, at fairs. And all of a sudden, we started making a little bit of money doing this. And it was kind of fun. So um, Brian really did a lot to promote chainsaw carvers and to get them out there and, and be seen and, and get them paid for what they do. So he was very instrumental in, in that part of the history of chainsaw art. And um, at that point, he invited Rick to go to Japan and to help teach over there and introduce chainsaw carving. So for two years, we got to go to Japan and teach. And I think we had 23 carvers come from Japan that year. And um, Keiji Kodokuro had never carved before at that point. And I mean, you, you just look back at, the, at where people have come from, and it, it's just phenomenal. And uh, I think they had a, a dancer that came from she wanted to dance. She was a dancer in Japan, and she decided she was going to come dance at the rendezvous. And so she came, and they had a film crew filming her dancing around the rendezvous. I don't know if anybody even remembers this, but this really happened. And then Andreas Martin came that year and brought his, his oompa band. Him and his wife brought their... Um, uh, yeah, the, what, what do they call that big horn? It goes to the ground. It goes, yeah, it's, it was beautiful. And they, I don't know if you remember them playing oh, up on the auction. Up on the yes. auction desk. <laughs> yes, and um, so it was really um, kind of fun. And um, It's amazing what this has done for the community. The kids around here kind of have, have a taste of the international in Ridgeway here. It's kind of cool that way. It really is amazing what the impact. It, and something I want to, I'm going to jump a little ahead here and tell you that you know, as long as I'm on the Japanese carvers. Eye of Lane is here this year, and she's a native of Japan. And there'll be a film crew from Japan here on Friday filming her for a reality TV show that's very, very popular in Japan, where the family writes in and um, they, they tell them that their children are somewhere else doing something, pursuing their dreams. So they go and film them and then put it on their TV. So Aya will be filmed. This crew will follow her around for about two weeks, and they're starting here. And when they're done with that, it will be on TV in Japan. And I guess it's a very, very popular TV show. So that's, yeah, they'll be here Friday. So if you see cameras walking around, it's kind of nice. So um, then we're going to 2004, and we featured Don Winter, who does the event in Addison. Addison grew out of, you know, probably a seed from the rendezvous, yeah, and he went back, and they do a big charity event for the Blind Association down there, and they've probably raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for the Blind Association. And um, 
So we featured him on the 2004, and I think that event is still still grow, going strong. It's really quite a, a nice, yeah, it's a really nice event. They get maybe 50 or 60 carvers there, and, and it's nice. Okay, uh, 2005. Well, 2005, the West Coast came to the rendezvous. Um, East met, meets West, and that was kind of a big, uh, that was a challenge that we, we, we took on and wanted the, the West Coast carvers to come to the East Coast and kind of get together. And Judy McVeigh, who um, was part of the Bacchus McVeigh family, who really was instrumental in taking the art form public, um, sent us this beautiful um, plaque of the 2004 t-shirt. And um, that was also the year we had the Tree Pirates. And we had the Tree Pirates come from England. We met them when we were in England because of the rendezvous, we got to go to many places and met many carvers. Yeah. And um, we invited the Tree Pirates to come and build a, a phenomenal piece that was uh, it's, it's sitting down in the fireman's grounds right now. And, and actually, the town is considering moving it to the rails to trails for the, the, the trailhead. So we're trying to figure out a way to do that. It's going to be a tough one. Michelle Begacki is taking that on, and um, she's working with the trail people. And I think it would be beautiful because it's all about north, south, east, and west. It was really an energy pole that they put together, and it was just phenomenal. Um, it was quite a challenge to have them do that. That was a crazy year. Um, all right, so the next year is 2000. Where are we at? 2006. Six. 2006, Jesse Groshen wrote the book, The Art of Chainsaw Curving. And it was published by Fox Chapel, so we definitely wanted to feature that on the book. And we featured Jay Chester Armstrong's carving. And I don't think he came that year. I think he came the following year um, to do one of our seminars. And if you get a chance to listen to the seminar that is attached to this, it's about creativity. And it is by far one of the best. It's a three-part. It's in three parts, but it is phenomenal. He did a beautiful job. He's a Berkeley. Berkeley, uh, California graduate out there, a real smart guy. You wonder why he's even carving. But <laughs> he's a fabulous, fabulous carver. Very smart man. Yeah. Okay, then um, the next year, we kind of lost a few of our carvers. Uh, Bill Plant, who was very instrumental in starting the Chainsaw Carvers Guild. And Bill Plant, the forum came about, that was the other thing I forgot to mention, the forum came about in 2002? One. 2001. Joe King went back and decided, you know, it would be nice if the carvers could continue talking to each other through the, you know, throughout the year. And he started the Yellow Forum, and it just lit up like a light bulb. Everybody went crazy. It was and Bill, so many, Bill Plant monitored it for years. Years, and every post that he did was "See you at the VU, see you at the VU." So I think that's when the carving <laughs> carvers went from 50 people to 200. So we can really definitely thank Bill Plant, and one of Bill Plant's heroes was Gary Patterson. So there's a carving that Gary Patterson did of Bill Plant carving, <coughs> and both of them passed away. Oh, they passed away within a year of each other, maybe. Yeah. So we featured them on the T-shirt, and um, <coughs> Angie Polgoise came from Australia, and she really got all the carvers working on the rendezvous throne, which is, sits at our studio, and it was just um, an incredible. I think people still come to our shop and get pictures taken sitting in the throne. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was phenomenal. She was very instrumental in getting yeah, people over. Yeah, she piloted that program, and it was incredible. Dayton Scoggins did the the eagle at the top, and it was just a lot of fun. And then, um, So, of course, we featured um, Dennis Beach, who really, Denny Beach is probably one of the best performance carvers out there. He really takes it to another level in entertainment and fun, and he's been instrumental in pushing us along, saying, you can do another year, you can do another year, you, gotta do it. you, gotta, you can't stop, no, there's no stopping this, you know, it's, it's, it's big, you know, and you can't ever stop. So he's really one of our biggest cheerleaders as far as... Um, We'd call everybody and say, hey, Dennis Beach is going to be there. And then they'd all register. <laughs> I remember one year that when Dennis was carving and, and the Japanese were here, and they were just like doing a beeline to see Denny carve. So it was just, you know, back in the early days. So, of course, he deserved his spot on the thing. And he's still, he's been here. I think he's only ever missed one rendezvous. I think there's only three people that have been to every rendezvous, and that's Rick, <laughs> Brian Sprague, and Wild Bill Drone. 
and they're the three that have been here for 15 years. Brian Sprague one year had bought tickets for the Mardi Gras, not realizing it was the same week as the rendezvous, and canceled his plans at the, at the Mardi Gras to come here. So that was always very impressive to me. I mean, I know they lost thousands of dollars on that deal, so, but, you know, they say this is home. So then um, we have year 10, and we decided that it was time to put Rick on the shirt. So. And my good friend had painted that for me, and it just seemed like it was worth using, you know. You know the bear carving Rick's, telling everybody welcome, so it was kind of fun. And, and because of the rendezvous, you know, our shop has grown. We've been um, invited by the state to you know, get a bigger place, because they would say people come and find you, and they can't find you, so uh, we'll give you a nice big loan. <laughs> so in that sense, it's been kind of nice. And this is a great video. Um, Sputnik from Australia was very instrumental in building our website in the beginning. And um, he, the first year he came, he heard about it through Andrew Poglase and thought, oh my god, I'm going to go and film there because there will be people cutting their arms off. He was, kind of, he was a hoot. Sputnik is just a beautiful, wonderful man who has helped. I mean, he's a beautiful videographer. And he's done a lot of the early videos of the rendezvous. And he actually went to England and a few other places. If anyone has documentary on early chainsaw carving, it would be Sputnik. And he, he loved the art form. And he came for, what, maybe four years, four or five years. And he, and he still, went yeah, he went to England. And he still built our website up until two years ago. So he was always the one working on everything and helping us get registration online. And he was my techie at that point. And so you can see the history. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. Look at that. That's, that's the early one. And, uh, but this is a really good video, and he, I think he'd like to, con you know, continue working on something like that. And he's always had a dream of it being even bigger and being. And there's Angie, and Mick Burns from England. And, and Mick is a phenomenal man. He's just an incredible carver. He came and did all these organic things and. He decided that, you know, everybody just wanted bears, so his, his theme when he came here was death to the bear. Yeah. 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 I mean, whoever bought his pieces in history, they will be probably one of the most collectible. I mean, one year he had them on spears, and one year he had them on a guillotine. And one year, I mean, he was absolutely The catapult, he had the catapult bear. I mean, he was phenomenal. Death to the bear, death to the bear, you know. And this is Michelle Scoggins. This is the first year she came, and it was like... That Dayton was a hand carver, a tugboat captain, and she decided that, you know, she bought him a chainsaw for Christmas, and they came here, and, and I mean, he rose to the top. Dayton just um, took it by storm. His wildlife carvings just changed, just changed it up a bit. So, and Rodney was our first Scotsman to come. He was a, I remember a Gene Collier from the Pittsburgh Press, or Pittsburgh Post-Gazette came. I. I called Gene Collier and said, if you would come and do a story on our rendezvous, I'll give you a place to stay. So I got him a room at the Royal, and he came, you know, and um, he was walking around, and he walked up to Rodney, and he said, are you a carver here, and what are you doing? And, and it was when we had the wishing well and the money for Make-A-Wish, and Rodney said, well, before you talk to me, you throw some money in that wishing well. <laughs> and truly, if you, you know, Google it, because it's one of the best articles on the rendezvous ever. He just did a great job. And... Um, so, of course, then we put Dayton and Michelle in 2010 because Dayton was winning competition after competition after competition. He was taking it by storm. And we had uh, KB Pictures found us, um, and they came. They were professional photographers, and they came to the rendezvous and started taking pictures of everyone. And then they went and visited carvers at their homes. And they went down to Mississippi to, to Michelle and Dayton, and they dragged their bed out into the field, and he took their picture. And it was just the most phenomenal thing, so it was like, that's going on the t-shirt, because it was just too much fun. So um, that was pretty neat. And, and they've been here, the last two years they haven't been here because um, I was doing a fair down in Texas. So, you know, we all grow, we move on, and we move up, and it's just kind of a, a fun thing. I know she calls me every day. It's like, what's going on? You know, we're missing it, so it's, it's kind of nice. Um, then we went to 2011. We put Jeff Samadusky on there, who you know took us years to figure out who Jeff was. He was so quiet mm -hmm. and unassuming, and he, he was the first guy to really set up scaffolding at a rendezvous and carpet a big bear. And he always took first at auction, but we always spelled his name wrong. 
We somehow he wouldn't get on the shirt. shirt. We forgot to put him on the shirt. The third year, I made sure I put him on the shirt, and when they went to print, his name was on the bottom, and they dropped it. Oh, wow. and he's like, he came and said, "Am I on the shirt?" Because I said, "You are on the shirt this year." And he hands up and he goes, "No, I'm not." <laughs> so it was like, "Okay, then you're going on the front next year." <laughs> so, but look what Jeff has done. I mean, he's just an incredible carver. He. He and Ken Packy did that big horse that took the world by storm. I mean, it, it probably went viral a thousand times. And uh, then he moved out to the West Coast, and when he came last year, I think he got he got a really bad cold here. And it's just, you know, it's hard. It's hard to keep, you know, traveling that far. And they, they've moved, you know, he's just phenomenal. He's a great carver. He really raised the bar in the carving world and challenged carvers to do some pretty phenomenal things. So, hats off to Jeff. And then Brett McLean. Brett McLean, who you'll meet, I'm sure, um, lives in New Jersey. And when a lot of the carvers come in internationally, he'll meet them in Newark and have a little party at his house and then bring them all out. And he is just, he's been to the rendezvous probably 14 times, I would think. We, we met him, he was just a kid. He's been over to England. He's been over to so England and every, yeah, he's been all over. And he's just a phenomenal carver. And he designed his t-shirt because it was the, the, the millennium year when the, the Mayan calendar was going to go down, so he definitely kind of did a, a, a shirt to, to rival that, and um, he's just been a great inspiration also. He helps us every year. And without him out there, we couldn't do it. And then last year we featured Randy Bonney, who was of course one of the, the founders of the event along with Rick, and it was time that, that he got his, his dues and uh, he's a fabulous carver. Randy was the ambassador to all the on the internet for all the years, inviting carvers to come here and, and take part in this wonderful, wonderful event. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing up here. I'm more of a visual communicator. I hardly ever talk. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Randy you know really would pump it up yeah. and get people here, and he made a lot of friends. And you know, Facebook has changed things and. This was a video that they shot to ask everybody to dance. And they sent it to Ellen DeGeneres, and it did go viral. We got a lot, a lot of, yeah, there you go. <laughs> right here in the dancing film. Yeah. <laughs> but we now have a marketing team that comes to our events and helps promote this e event and does our website, because I'm really too old to do all that. I don't know how to do it, so I <laughs> have to get people that know how. And. Um, this year, our t-shirt, we featured Scott Dow. Um, Jessie Groshen is writing her new book. It's The Art of Chainsaw Carving, Volume 2. And she has included Scott, Zoe, and Andreas Martin as the three new inspirational people for the rendezvous, or for the, the book. And uh, she will feature the rendezvous in there also. And when she came this year to interview them, I, this is a, a story about the shirt this year. And I, I think I want to share it with you. Well, Scott, now we had a a pretty crazy art event uh, last year up in Lake Chautauqua, New York, and uh, one of our friends up there offered up some money, so we had sort of my dream art competition, and uh, we did, uh, uh, yeah, it was a Chautauqua art challenge, and uh, we did a painting, four by four painting, we did cardboard one day, we did clay, uh, wood carving, and ice. ice. And then they had to do a performance. And a performance besides. Mm -hmm. Scott uh, topped out, and we're all really proud of him. He's just a fantastic all-around artist. And that's another reason he's on the shirt, is just that he's just fantastic. Well, he's raising the bar again. I mean, the movement that he gets in his art, in the, you know, the things that he can do. Are, his are, dinosaurs down, uh, lost down there. Yeah. <laughs> and so when Jesse came to interview him, um, and Zoe, I drove Jesse up to Scott's house, and we were at his studio, and um, she d she got all her pictures, because she really wasn't planning on going till the next day, um, and I said, well, why don't we just go today, because it's, it's kind of a crazy drive, because we, um, we were at the casino doing the event, and um, so I took her there, and then when we were backing out of his, his shop, I backed into his angel. And I knocked it down and smashed it. Oh no! And I had this big dent in my car. And also at that time, I, I know many of you probably know Becky Town. And Becky was part of our um, committee. She's been for years. She's been. She helped. She has helped me tremendously. And she and her family were in a tragic car accident in September, and, and Becky lost Becky. And so um, 
the day that we were there is the day they took her off of life support. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a, a, a real emotional day anyway. And you know, then I knocked over the angel and I put a dent in my car and we got back home and Scott sent a picture that the angel had a new face and there was no dent in my car. And uh, so the angel's on our t-shirt this year. So that's kind of the story there. I mean, the rendezvous has so many stories that, you know, I tell people, what they say, what is the rendezvous for me? For all of you, it's art and sculpture and, and learning. For me, it's all about energy and creativity and, and seeing and getting to experience what all of you do on a daily basis. All right, are we good? <laughs> Uh, Rick, could you please tell us about the initial dream and, and the statements uh, that you wrote up here probably many years ago? I did that as a speech uh, when we, we uh, after I don't know how many years we'd done the rendezvous, we, our town put us in for a Governor's Award, Pennsylvania Governor's Award for Arts, and we, we got it through community. Uh, Creative Community in the Arts Club. And I, I wrote this up and did it as a speech down there on stage with the governor and uh, some other pretty hot art, Pennsylvania artists that after afterwards I realized how famous he's Jeff people. Coons. Jeff Coons, he's like one of the top American artists right now. I was like, wow, I was on stage with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even know it. But uh, I got a heck of an applause because of the last line basically. You know, if anybody can come up with a better solution, don't tell me. So I'm happy to be a chainsaw partner. It's been really an amazing. I, you know, I'm not. I, I really panned out in high school. I just couldn't do that stuff. That I could always draw ever since I could remember, and uh, started playing guitar at 13, and you know, did uh, wood carvings in Boy Scouts, and. and uh, it's just amazing that the life I've had for like a dummy of a guy, kind of, you know, without being educated, that that creative part of us is just as valuable as intelligence, I think, and maybe sometimes even more so. And I'm not much of a verbal communicator, but I love to communicate with my music and my art. It's been a wonderful life. I, I just can't believe the life I've had in the last 15 years. A lot of it is because of the rendezvous and the contacts you make and uh, the appreciation that people have that we do do this and share it with the world. And it really helped chainsaw carving around the world. Like when the Brits first came, they weren't even using carving bars. They were just using stock bars to carve with. It really helped introduce the equipment. and. Uh, that's why some a lot of people don't come because they're already scheduled for trips somewhere else and it united all of us enough to really spread it out and all of us got to go a lot of people went to different countries and, and competed and, and traveled and have friends there still that one of the girls in town was over this summer with a boyfriend that she met at the rendezvous so it's not exactly all about carving <laughs> We have babies in town. And <laughs> you know, when, when we started the rendezvous, there was maybe maybe two or three carving events throughout the world. That was it. Now, if you look, there's events all over all the time. And, you know, when, while you're here, you know, network. That's, that's the name of the game. You network with other people because it just keeps making the art form grow. And, and you grow as artists. And, and it's just phenomenal. You get to move on and, and move up and do great things and travel the world. And then some guys will be back next year, no doubt. They, they, they can't stay away sometimes. It's just quite a draw to be here. In 2002, you had 11 events. Now we have about 114. I believe that, wow. yeah. When you guys went over to Japan back in 2001, one, two, yeah. there was just a handful of Japanese carvers. Now there's over 2,000 carvers, 11 clubs, and Tolly is still the largest chainsaw event they that you guys established. We, when we went there, um, you know, except for the language barrier, it was difficult. Their goal was to to have Toei, their their little town, be like Ridgeway, and and that was the mecca of carving in their country. 
they accomplished it, had the largest chainsaw carving event in the world, 72 carvers, and they used to bring over 17 to 20 to some I mean, I used to have 20, I used to have to try and find lodging for 25 Japanese carvers, <laughs> and then we had, I had to hire an interpreter um, who was Eureka, I don't know if any of you remember Eureka, <laughs> we, we, I lost a lot of friends this last year, Eureka passed away of cancer last year too. But all through the networking that all started in this little town, yep, Ridgeway. Any We're other really proud. Thank well, we're you proud all of all coming. of you for coming. Yeah, Thank you. That's My what goodness. really makes it. Make new friends every year and lose a few too. And someday it'll be my turn. So, thank you very much for attending and bearing with us and, and really carving well too so that we can keep this going for our future. And I know. think what, you know, the event actually <coughs> pays for, I mean, we pay for this event through. Through all you your guys. Efforts. Thank yeah. you so much because without you, uh, we couldn't. I mean, if it ever tanked, we'd be done. <laughs> you know, I, I've never made much money. I'm not that kind of business guy, but, but experientially in my life, I didn't need money. I had too many friends and too many invitations and too, just a road to hoe. Oh, it's just been fantastic. It's not easy and it's very physical, and I'm 64 now, so it's. Well, you know, my bones are gone and all the joints are gone. Out Anybody that's parked on the street up here, going up towards the old courthouse annex up there, got a little parking there. So if there's anybody that's in here, if you can move your vehicle, there'll be tickets coming any minute. I got a question. I'm like way up in the parking lot. I thought I was on the street. Yeah, as long as you're not on that street there. There's, there's signs right there that say go park.